How many know that God wants us to walk and know how to fight? Amen? He wants us to be aware that he's called us to be able to fight um, in the spirit realm. And so in, in, in the weeks prior, three, four weeks ago, I started this series on Ephesians. I talked about where we're seated, that we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, right? That we're co-heirs with Christ and, and that all things were placed under Jesus's authority. And so if we're seated as co-heirs with Christ, all things are put under our authority, amen? Because we're in Christ. And so once we understand our authority, as we move on in the book of Ephesians, we begin to see that uh, we understand where we're seated, but then we need to understand how we're to walk. And I talked about that uh, last week, that we had to walk in unity. We have to learn how to walk in the light, how to walk in love, how to walk in the new man. We talked about all of these different ways of walking. And um, last week, actually, Pastor Peter, Pastor Peter, how do you like that? Pastor Peter spoke about the importance to have healthy relationships. And we're reading through the book of Ephesians, I believe it's in chapter 5, um, begins to talk about how our relationship with our spouse, what it should look like. How uh, a relationship between uh, children and their parents and how parents are supposed to respond to their children. It talks about uh, employees and, and employers, how, how you're to relate to one another. Because how many know relationships are important? Relationships are very important. Before we really dive into the armor of God, we need to understand the importance of relationships. And as a church, if the enemy can get us to not understand how important relationships are to God, then, uh, then and we start, what happens is we begin to focus on our behavior. We try to modify our behavior to please God. But if it's not attached to relationship, you move into legalism. Because God is all about relationships. And we're going to look at a scripture here. It's Matthew chapter 22, verse 34 to 40. But when the Pharisees heard that he silenced the Sadducees, because he, he just had so much wisdom, they gathered together, and then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing Jesus, and saying, Teacher, which, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment in the law. All right? And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, hang, I want you to say hang, all the laws and the prophets. And I want you to understand something here is that um, what the scripture is saying is I have a coat hanger here. Can you give me that coat hanger, honey? Okay, I have a coat hanger. And, and the Bible says that all the law and the prophets hang on the coat hanger of relationship. And so, Camilla, would you hang, one, hang the Ten Commandments on that little hook? No, on the hook. See the little hook? There we go. There we go. Perfect. Put the law. See, it's unbalanced now. But we're going to put the, the prophetic word of the Lord on the other side here. And that balances out, okay? So the Bible says that all of the laws of God... All the prophetic words of God in the Holy Scriptures, all of this hangs on relationship. If, if you do not recognize that all of the law of God and all of the revelation of God hangs on healthy relationships, you're going to move into bondage. God doesn't want you to live in bondage. He wants you to live with healthy relationships. We, we want to, first of all, understand or be known for who we are, not what we do. We talked about, you know, Peter and Anita, they're, they're children of the Most High God. That's who they are. What do they do for God? Well, they're going to be pastored. But what are they known for? Their, their identity is as sons and daughters. of. You need to know your identity in God, not what you do for God, but who you are in God. And relationship is so important uh, because what happens is, you know, we have all this grace teaching now that talk, well, we we're no longer under the law. Listen, I want to be under the law. The law is a good thing if it's attached to relationship. Do you understand? So the question is, uh, you know, the question should be, how can I love my wife better? 
How can I love my kids better? How, how can I be a better friend? How, how, can, how can I love my, here's, a, here's one that hurts, my enemies better. Jesus says, love your enemies, do good to those who despitefully use you and abuse you. Listen, Jesus is so much into relationship, he's telling us to love our enemies. Like, how do you do that? And he's saying, he's saying, this is so important. So, so then you start saying, okay, if I'm going to love my wife better or my kids better, I, I got to stop snapping. I got to deal with this anger issue because, you know, sometimes I, I, I snap and, and that really hurts the relationship I'm supposed to have with this person. I got to stop talking behind somebody's back because I'm hurting our relationships. Uh, you know, you know. Here, here's here's one. I should stop lying to that person. I really, I really shouldn't covet what they have. I should be thankful for them because I love them. I, I shouldn't really commit adultery, men. Jesus says, if you look at a woman to lust after, you commit adultery in your heart. If you love your spouse, why are you looking at those things on the internet? Love. What am I listing? I'm listing the Ten Commandments. And people say, well, we're no longer under the law. Well, listen, I don't want to be part of your religion then because I'm under the law. The law of love because you know what? I don't want to lie. I don't want people lying to me. I don't want people stealing from me. I don't want to steal from others. I don't want to covet. I don't want to worship false idols. The law is holy. It's pure. It's good. But if it's not attached to relationship, it becomes a form of bondage. Amen? And so the law is good. Relationships need to be the focus first because it will affect the effectiveness of our prayer. God is so concerned about relationship. God wants us to have healthy relationships, and the enemy wants to come, and he would like to mess that up. Do you know, relationships are so important to God. That if we don't get them right, or we don't at least try to work on them with the grace of God, say, God, help me to be a better whatever. Help me to work on this relationship. Then what happens is it will affect your effectiveness. I'm going to give you some examples. 1 Peter chapter 3, 7. Okay? Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding. Speaking about the wife. Giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel. Now, we're talking about weaker. We're talking about they're emotionally wired. So, you know, many times you can crush them a lot easier than, you know. Some, sometimes I, the way I would talk to the guys, you can't talk that way with your wife. I mean, it doesn't go over well, men. Uh, as being heirs together of the grace of life. And so Paul's almost saying, like, you're not supposed to lord over your wife. You're heirs together. Even though God has made you the spiritual head of the home, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you're to lord over your wife. You're heirs together. And look what it says, that your prayers may not be hindered. In other words, if you lord over your wife and, and, and you're not taking care of her, your prayers will be hindered. So what's the point of teaching you about how to put on the whole armor of God and how to do warfare if it's not going to work anyway? Because you're not protecting this relationship with the grace of God. Now, am I telling the truth? Am I reading the Bible? Are we reading the same text here? Okay, just make sure. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 to 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. You know, it's a, it's a, you, know you reap what you sow. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Oh, my goodness. I, I, what am I going to do? I have unforgiveness. Well, go and make things right. God wants to forgive you, but if you refuse to forgive others, how can he forgive you? So go and make things right. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 29, 31. Paul is talking about communion. He's talking about all this, the issues in the relationships. There's issues in the relationships within the Corinthian church. And look what he says. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself. Not discerning the Lord's body. Who's the Lord's body? We are. For this reason, say for this reason. Many are weak and sick among you and many sleep or die. Because there's relationship issues that you're not willing to deal with. See, God cares about relationships so much that there's a judgment that comes if you will not focus on it. 
Isn't that, is this, is this clear? And so we have to say, God, by your grace, help me to work on these relationships. And when the relationship here, all the laws, all the prophets hang on intimate relationship with God first and then intimate relationship with others. The Ten Commandments are not burdensome. The only ingredient missing in the Old Testament was that they didn't have the law of love. But in the New Testament, the, the Holy Spirit has been, come into our hearts and has shed upon, the love of God has been shed abroad upon our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So now we have the spirit of love in us, so the law actually becomes attractive. That's why when you lie to someone, you go home and you sit there and go, I shouldn't have said that. I really feel bad about that. I should go back and I should say, so. I, should, I, I stretch the truth. How many know what I'm talking about? And it'll eat you away until you go back and say, listen, you know what? I kind of stretch the truth. I shouldn't have lied to you. you know? Before, you wouldn't have cared. You just would have wrote it off. But you care about that relationship. And you care about your relationship with God because the love of God has been shed abroad in your hearts. So now we're at the armor. Say, finally. Finally at the armor. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Does anybody else feel it's really warm in here or what? It's good, okay. It's a fire of God, I guess. Here we go. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. I love this. It says, finally, my brethren. So in other words, now that we got all this relationship stuff, relationship stuff figured out, now I can say what I want to say. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In the power of his might. That word might or that word power actually means dominion. It actually means strength or manifested power shown effective in, here it is, reigning authority. Power that's shown effective in reigning authority. And so Paul is saying, be strong in the Lord in reigning authority. So Jesus reigns and rules. You're ruling and reigning with Christ. Okay, he says, so put on the whole armor of God, say the whole armor. So you can't just put on part of it. You got to put on the whole thing. Because if you don't put it all on, then you're going to kind of miss the boat, right? You're not going to be protected. And, and I find this interesting because, you know, the whole armor of who? Of we actually get to wear God's armor. As you know, I, I read in the Old Testament where like little David, he's a shepherd boy, and he gets really ticked off when he hears Goliath like insulting the God that he serves. And he says to Saul, listen, let me go out and take this guy out. And Saul says, here, try on my armor. And how many know the armor didn't fit little David? Somehow, supernaturally, God has made it possible for us to fit into the armor of the living God. And, and when we have that armor in, we're, we're unstoppable. We're able to do great things and exploits for God. Amen? And, and, and it's God's armor. Say God's armor. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 17, talks about Jesus and his armor. For he puts on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He puts on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. Next verse. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. And you're in that armor. Isn't that amazing? You're able to put God's armor in and then you're to stand. And now when we he use this word stand. We're not talking about just standing up. It's, it refers to having a stance, being prepared. As you know, when I took Kung Fu, it used to bother me because I really wanted to take martial arts. And my parents were like, well, we, we don't let you take martial arts because it's tied into you know, Buddhism and all this kind of stuff. So they found a, a, an instructor from China who said, I just teach him the, the, the form and how to fight. We don't do any meditation, all this kind of stuff. So they let me go. And so I joined this this uh, Kung Fu guy. And so I'm all ready to learn how to strike. I'm just, yeah, I'm going to strike. He said, no, no, first you need to learn to walk. 
said, what do you mean? I know how to walk. I learned how to walk when I was like little. I'd pull myself up on the couch and I'd move along and I know how to walk. No, you don't walk properly. You drag your feet, son. Oh, I drag my feet. Yeah, you need to walk like this. You got to walk like you're ready to strike at any time. So I had to practice walking. Would you imagine the hours, you know? You know, it felt like Daniel's son, you know, wax on, wax off, right? And so I'm learning how to walk. He's got me walking around while other people are striking and wrestling. And so then he says, I'm going to teach you eight stances. And so when you learn, when you walk, if someone's about to strike you, you got to be able to get into that stance and then move into a striking stance. And then and he got me practicing stances and stances and how to stand and how to center my balance. And, and I got so good that I'd have three or four guys could not move me off my feet. They'd be pulling this way, this guy would be pulling this way, and, and I got really excited because I knew how to stand. Still didn't know how to strike. And then one time I went camping, and there was a, a university or college wrestling team there. And when I heard it, I said, hey, I want to wrestle you guys. That was a big mistake because they knew how to stand better than me. <laughs> that was very painful, but... I had to learn to stand, right? And so, so you need to learn to stand. On, you don't just stand there like this, you know. I was in Cuba, and I was, I was, I was walking in the water, and it was really crazy. I looked around, and I saw my wife. And she was so beautiful. I was just looking. I like your new bathing suit. No, did I say that in church? <laughs> You're looking good, honey. And I'm just looking at her, and all of a sudden, her eyes are like, <gasps> and I'm like, why are you looking at it? And all of a sudden, this wave hits me. Boof. And all I remember is thinking, am I ever going to come up? My head's coming off the sand. My face is getting dragged along the bottom, and I'm twirling and twirling. And finally, I come up. I was like, what happened? I was distracted. <laughs> and that's what happens, you know, in our spiritual lives. If you get distracted, you start looking. If you're not standing, you see, when the, after that, when the wave came, I stood, and I was able to push through it. But when I was distracted, that thing came over me. Now, it's very important because the word while, the Bible says that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That word while means traveling over like a wave. That's why you're to be sober and alert for your enemy seeks whom he may devour. You've got to be on guard, not fearful, but just be on guard. And so while means to travel over with trickery and to lie in wait. Ephesians 6, 12 says this, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts in wickedness in heavenly places. And I want to close with this. We'll get into the armor next Sunday. But we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Your battle is not with the person that is standing in front of you. Your battle is with the spirits that are speaking through them. Amen. And that's why Jesus was able on the cross to say, he was able to say, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Satan, his and so he saw the person in their deception. So, number one, say, I'm called to wrestle. You might not feel like a wrestler, but God has called you to wrestle in the spirit. You need to fight. You need to stand, right? And your fight is not with flesh and blood. It's with the demonic realm that works through people. If you don't think that demonic people, demonic influence is coming through people, just watch the news. Especially everything that's going on in the States and all that. It's just, ah, ah, ah. People are just crazy right now. But you know what? I'll tell you this. I want you to say this to me. Say, I'm called to fight, and my fight is not with flesh and blood. Amen. Next week, what I'll do is we'll get into the armor, and we're going to talk about this little guy here. Amen? Awesome. Why don't we stand together? And uh, Clara, would you come and end us off with a song? A fighting song. Good one. Good praise song. We're going to end with this song today. Um, we actually have, I know um, Bill and Carla have prepared some cake, celebration cake, so please make sure you have some cake and coffee uh, before you go today, and um, that'll be great. Father, we thank you for this time together, Lord. We thank you that your word is alive and living. I thank you, God, that we're able to fit into your armor, 
that we're co-heirs with you. And you, you put that armor around us and say, put it on. It's yours. Learn to fight. Learn to stand. Don't be distracted. But stand fast in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen.